there's actually two videos of my Ribble experience. The other video, which you can go check out, is the buying experience and getting the bike and everything I had to deal with when I first got the bike and having it delivered. This video is going to be the full review of my bike now that I've owned it for a couple months. Let's jump right into it. I'm not gonna get into all to the specs and all the crazy stuff that everybody talks about. I'm just gonna get into the things that you really wanna know. You're probably just like me. You're thinking about getting this bike. You wanna know what's good. You wanna know what's bad. You wanna know how you're gonna feel about your purchase at the end of the day. So let's get right into it and let me tell you that overall, I'm happy. Now, that's not to say that everything's perfect, but let me go over what I really like about this bike. Now, first of all, it's an endurance bike, right? But it takes a lot of characteristics from an aero bike. Now, look at this frame. The dropped seat stays. The way it's shaped. The short head tube. There is no round tubes on this frame. Everything's squared off. It takes a lot of characteristics from an aero bike. Even check out the seat post angular oval in the front flat in the back the whole frame is flat in the back very aerodynamically designed but at the same time a super comfortable bike so let's just say that overall frame wise i really like this frame the other part i really like about this ribble endurance sl is no cables no cables whatsoever are can be seen you have a little bit maybe on your rear derailleur, but you can't totally get rid of that. But the sleekness of this bike with no cables to be seen anywhere around the handlebars, the front forks, the rear part of the bike, even down by the cranks. Very sleek. I love no cables. The third thing I love about this bike, the integrated cockpit. Now, yes, you have to pay a little bit more to get that, but what a difference when you go to an integrated cockpit, I'm telling you guys, it's worth the extra money. It is the future, it is what is to come. The way that they tuck that all away and make it slick and smooth, I think you just can't beat it. I love the look, I love the feel of it. Now let's talk about the components you get with this bike. Ugh. The components, full Altegra. They don't fit in some other cranks, they don't fit in some other brakes or you know some of these other things that you know really bothers me that some of these other big bike brands do full integra when you buy the group set you get everything altegra dura ace 105 whatever you choose i've even had bike manufacturers will say full altegra and then they'll stick a 105 rear cassette on there or even worse an unknown rear cassette on there you're not going to have that these disc brakes everything altegra i really like that as well so let's talk about the handling of this bike. Now with the shape of this frame and the way it's designed, I don't know exactly how or what makes it handle so well, but what I like about the handling is I can lean to the left, I can lean to the right, I can take sharp corners, and all the other bikes I've ever owned before this, it gets a little dicey at times. I've never had this feeling on this bike, and I'm not saying that this is the best out there. I'm just saying, you will be happy with the handling of this bike. And I gotta tell you, when I do 50 mile rides, I would get like that back fatigue. I'm not getting that with this. I'm not fatigued out at all. If I'm tired, my legs are tired before it's my back or I'm like, oh, or I get my saddle sore, all that stuff. So the positioning, the geometry, at least for me, I love it. I have not been fatigued due to the frame or due to crouched over, hunched, and all that good stuff. Now, obviously, a good bike sizing on almost any bike will help with that. But I can tell you, this almost right out of the box was spot on for me. Another thing I love about Rebel and why I chose this is the options. Not only are they selling you a bike, but they have one of the best custom bike builder applications on their website that I've ever seen. You can customize down to almost anything. That is a great thing. They even have a really cool, if you're willing to spend the extra 300 plus bucks, uh, you can customize your own paint job in almost any which way, shape, or fashion, gradient into two colors, change the change the logo colors, change the seat stays. It's a really cool thing if you're willing to spend the extra money. Maybe in the next time I will. The other thing I like about it is on their website, not only do you have a custom bike builder, 
but they literally sell additional components and accessories on the website that you can buy aftermarket that are specifically made for Ribble bikes. I think that's great. I actually bought some stuff. I got some uh, handlebar ends. I got some uh, handlebar tape. Obviously, you can see I got my rear light here. Ribble also owns a company. I'm not sure if it's theirs or a secondary company called Level. Level are the people that make my integrated handlebars. And I also use some of that money to buy my oversized ceramic pulley system here. Finally, for the pluses, I want to get to the value of this bike. If you see my other video that I just made, I go through all that. But I can still tell you even now when I look at other bikes and the components and the geometry and everything you get, I cannot find a better value. Now I get this is not a first tier well-known name brand bike, at least not here in the States. I ride with other people, I've tried bikes at bike stores, and even those top end brand names, yeah, you might like them better, they're more recognizable, and there's be, there might be parts of their bike or frame that are slightly more polished, but you're not gonna get a better value, at least at this range of bike. Now, if you want everything on your road bike, and you're willing to sacrifice the brand name that everybody's gonna know and love, I really think this would be a great option for you. Now, not everything's sun and roses with this bike. There are some things that I wish they would approve upon. Now, I understand this is an endurance bike, but one of the things I feel they could have kind of tweaked maybe just a little bit is the down tube. Now, as I said earlier, I love the frame shape, but if you look at the top of the down tube, it's flat and it's pretty wide. And I get that they may need that for the internal componentry, the DI2 junction, and maybe some other things. But I wish they would taper it off just a little bit, make it maybe just a little bit arrow. Not a game stopper for me, but just a tweak that I would like to see them change in the future. And that just make a little bit slimmer down tube. Another thing that Again, I'm being nitpicky. It has some weird holes and weird screws in weird parts of the frame that I don't really understand. So there's like a random hole here in the top of the fork. There's a second random hole next to where the cable comes. There's obviously, if you didn't have the internal handlebars where the cable would go into the frame right here. This I don't mind because they, they did cap it off nicely with a rubber grommet. But some of these other exposed holes just seems, I don't know, unfinished. Now, I suspect that maybe over in the UK, they have these screws and holes in the frame to add mud guards or fenders maybe. Well, also in the fork, there's some extra holes in the fork that just don't make sense to me. And you would think if it's for rim brakes or another version of disc brakes or some other kind of brake, they make different versions of the forks, or again, find a better way just to leave so many holes in the bike. Now, another thing is a little bit worrisome, and that's why I have, if you can see, this rubber, this rubber padding on my chainstay. The way this bike is, or the way the frame is laid out, this top, the top part of the chain is pretty close to the chainstay. And when I ride on some rough roads or maybe a little bit off-road or go over some, you know, kind of bumps, the chain will actually hit the top of the frame or the chain stay on the frame. So I had to do this for now. I think I'm going to buy some of that clear uh, protective helicopter tape and wrap it around the frame. But I'm using this for now only because it does happen at least a couple times per ride where I hear the chain hit this, the frame. I wish there would have been a little bit of better design. The rims that come with this bike, and this is not Ribble's fault, but the rims that come, the Mavic Elysium rims, are really heavy. Really heavy, almost 1,900 grams. Eventually, I had to switch them out for some lighter rims. The rims that I got are only 1,500 grams, and it really helped, which brings me to my final negative, is this bike's kind of heavy. It's more than kind of heavy. It is a little heavy. It weighs over 18 pounds. My felt bike that I had before this was 16 and a half. So you think about it, this bike's almost two pounds heavier. Now believe me, I know I'm not looking so slim these days and you're all gonna say, hey Jeff, lose a couple pounds and it'll feel the same. And I'm ready for those comments. 
but at the same time, as I pick up the bike, I can clearly feel the difference. There, there needs to be some more work on the development of disc brakes. Uh, a, they need to, I think they need to be lighter, and B, they really have to figure out a way to prevent uh, the rubbing and the adjustment of those brakes. But uh, again, I'm nitpicking here. Overall, they're great if you spend a little extra time adjusting them. And let me just finish by saying this overall. The customer service with Ribble, there's really some great highlights with them and there's some low, low points with them. They're trying, so let me start by saying I think they try. So they have an online chat, they, you can call them even if you're not in the same country as them and you can email them. And for the most part, they're pretty responsive. And for the most part, they try and help you out. I think the inexperience of their customer services, when they need to go to someone else to get something, either a part or an issue resolved or something fixed, it takes time and maybe a little bit too much time. So it's, it's a constant going back to trying to get something accomplished. Again, I think they are try to help you the best they can, but it's not 100% streamlined from the time you call or let them know of an issue to the time they resolve it. So as uh, this virus or this pandemic that we're going through, and there's a lot of people buying bicycles right now, and there's a huge backlog on getting a bike from Ribble, and there's always going to be a wait because, again, they're custom built for you, but there's even a longer wait due to this pandemic. What I think they need to figure out is how to shorten that overall time because like I said you're waiting a long time to get your bike the last thing you want to do like me is have to wait another month or a month and a half or even two months to get your problems resolved but other than that the final question you have for me would I do it all again and the answer is yes overall I really like this bike it's a joy to take it out each and every week I am rarely disappointed with the performance of this bike I think this bike actually makes me a better rider, if that makes sense. I think the more you enjoy the bike that you're riding, the more you're apt to get out there and ride. And because of that, I am extremely happy. I think it's worth the money that I spent for this bike. I would do it again. It's not all, it wasn't all perfect, but now that the bike is done and I'm riding it, I'm super happy with this purchase. And I can't see myself being much happier with any other bike because I'm sure with any other bike I chose, I would have slight issues or find slight faults with it as well. So with that, leave any questions in the comments to ask me that I didn't cover. But overall, I hope you enjoyed this review and I hope I helped in your decision making if you're thinking about getting this bike and or if you have this bike and you share the same opinions that I have. So till the next video guys, see you later. Talk to you then.